Hi guys, I'm back. So in this video, I'm going to explain electron volts. But first, let me remind you that if you have suggestions for anything, be sure to comment. And always comment, rate, subscribe, and go to my website, which is in the description. So also, pics of this script will not be uploaded to website because I already have pics of my other script, and they look exactly the same, except for the content. So don't need more of the same thing. Now on to science. So this time, as I said, I'm explaining the electron volts. What is an electron volt? Well, as you can see here, it is the amount of kinetic energy, make sure that kinetic, not potential, gained by an unbound electron, so an electron that's not bound to an atom or bound to anything else, when it passes through a one volt potential. So um, energy, <laughs> it's a really vague term. There's all kinds of energy that you know of. You know, all through the electromagnetic spectrum, spectrum, etc. You know, uh, so what can it mean? So electron volts uh, can be units of momentum. So, you know, you have um, units of momentum. Sorry, a hypercam too makes the pages a little bit slower. But, uh, but uh, when it goes through, like say, a Lyonac, a linear particle accelerator, the energy it gains is momentum. So if you take the electron volt divided by c, which is a constant of velocity, velocity excuse me, you get uh, energy to describe the momentum, because a momentum is a kind of energy. If you're running, you have kinetic energy, you have a momentum energy. So um, that is what the electron volt can describe when you put it over a constant, as you can see here. Um, like where it says right here, it says thus dividing energy in electron volts by the speed of light in a vacuum. One can describe the momentum of electron volts as electron volts over C, which is the speed of light in a vacuum, as described in E equals mc squared, which actually comes up a lot in what I'm talking about. But the electron volt is also very useful because as well as being able to describe momentum, as you can see here, it can also describe mass. And so um, the way it can do that is, in particle physics, energy and mass are used interchangeably. Well, not interchangeably, but they can be interchanged. This is because of mass-energy equivalence, which I think I have pulled up as my next, next page here. Uh, yes, here we go. Page is loading, page is loading. I'll pause it now. Okay, so here it is. So essentially mass energy en uh, uh, mass energy equivalence mass energy equivalence states that m the mass of a particle is a means of describing its energy content so this works because in natural units uh, right here somewhere because in natural units you see here we got e equals mc squared in natural units c would be equal to 1 because distance squared over time squared, and since light goes the same distance in the same time, you get c squared equaling to 1, thus energy equals to mass. So that's how mass and energy can be used interchangeably. And uh, while the page is loading, I'll just continue to keep talking. So that's how it works, is based on Einstein's famous equals mc squared. So. Uh, say each, uh, say an electron and a positron each have 0.511 mega electron volts as uh, over c squared, and a mass when they annihilate, or no, not mass, but when they annihilate, they produce 1.022 mega electron volts of energy. So that is how much mass they have, and you can see that if you add that up, you get how much mega electron volts of energy they have. So there we go. We have mass and energy in this that has been tested, I'm sure, in the LHC, the electron-positron collider, uh, Fermilab, you know, with Tevatron, etc. So that is um, how that works. So you can see how mass and energy can be used interchangeably in actual real-life experience. Well, not really real life, as this isn't real life, but in a real actual example that has actually happened. So the electron volt can also be used as temperature because you can convert kelvins into joules. Joules are units of energy, essentially. 
And so if you can convert kelvins into joules, right here is set on the bottom, and you can also convert electron volts into joules with, um, right here, this conversion fo uh, factor, one electron volt equals 1.6021487 times 10 to the 19th joules. Um, so for temperature, if you do both that and then you divide them out, you get how many degrees Kelvin one electron volt would be. So they say in here, like in flat plasma physics, it is useful to use it as a measure of temperature because obviously if it's as temperature, it can also be defined as mass and momentum. So that's why it's useful, as we said earlier, right here is in getting the um, mass of the electron and positron giving that much energy. So, um, so th that's how they, if you're wondering how they get the energy and the mass from each other, if they know the mass, they can get the energy. If they know, if they know the energy, they can get the mass. And I might do a video in the future on mass energy equivalence just because I think it's such an interesting subject. So, so now that we've gone through uh, lots of the major uses of electron volts, you can see the energy of photons in the physical spectrum here. But anyway, um, now that we've gone through all of uh, well, most of the very common and widely used uh, uh, usages, I guess, of the electron volt, it would be useful to know that the electron volt is used with a lot of the SI prefix prefixes, such as giga electron volt is useful um, because a proton, so somewhere around here, um, has a mass oh, right here of 0.938 giga electron volts, meaning that if you collided two protons together, or proton and antiproton, they would give you uh, roughly two giga electron volts worth of energy. So that's how, in the LHC, if you wonder how they know that, say, in the future when they're going to be running it at seven uh, tera electron volts, they give each particle, or 14 total, but they give each particle seven tera electron volts worth of uh, kinetic energy and mass because, um, well, I'm getting off the script here that I wrote, so I'll, I'll address that at the end. Oh, uh, where are we? Oh yeah, okay, so we were at the SI prefixes, so it can be used with giga, tera, milli, pico, what have you, you know, the usual mega, you know, whatever, the usual. But the uh, electron volts actually isn't in the SI. So um, it's not in the SI, so that's why that the electron volt has so many variable meanings and uh, as they say up here, it has to be described through experimentation as there is a, um, do, 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 somewhere around here. Um, anyway, they had to find out the, their essentially definitions of it based on experimentation because there is no standard for the electron volt. So um, that's why it can have so many different meanings. So, just to wrap this all up and explain it all really quickly, the electron volt is the kinetic energy of unbounded electron gains as it passes through one volt difference. This energy is kinetic, remember, not potential. And so this energy can be interchanged, not interchanged, but this, this kinetic energy can be momentum. As we all know, momentum is kinetic energy. And then through mass energy equivalence, it can be mass, and then it can even be used as a temperature th through the conversion to joules into kelvins. And so um, uh, I was going to talk about something earlier, but I forgot what it was. So let me pause the video and remember it. Okay, yes. It was in the LHC's super proton synchrotron. What happens is the electrons, or the protons in their case, are at the highest velocity they can possibly be. They're like three meters slower than the speed of, three meters per second slower than the speed of light, right? You can't get much faster than that. So at that point, instead of adding to their energy by making it go faster, they add to their energy by giving it mass. So as you can see, if we added momentum and mass to a particle's energy, they both incre uh, contribute to raising its overall kinetic energy because both are part of the electron volt. So if I have if I have X number of mass, whatever, I don't know how much I weigh in um, kilograms, but anyway, if I have X number of mass, say I have a paper clip, it weighs one gram, right? And uh, it's sitting down, I'm not sure how much, you know, uh, mass it would have in electron volts, but it would have X number of electron volts. Now, if I threw that paper clip and it was moving a lot faster, the momentum would get added to the mass and give it extra energy. So, 
you can add momentum and you can add mass in the super proton synchrotron's case to get extra energy out of it. And so um, I, uh, under a request from some people, I built up this little thing in the paint and um, uh, let's see if I can get it to preview here in a, in a yes, there we go, in an actual case. Okay, so right here we have my uh, little unbound electron. We have a one volt differential, so that's one volt, that's ground, so that's a one volt potential. And so you can see on the right here, it gains some momentum. Okay, it wouldn't actually get deflected through, it would continue to go straight, but just so I could fit it both. It would gain momentum, because that's what happens in line axe, is it gain momentum. Now say it couldn't gain momentum, or you've designed this specific volt differential so that it could gain mass. Well then, it would gain mass instead of momentum, or maybe it could possibly gain both. So, uh, that is how your electron volt works. So, mass and momentum, and it could be used for mass and momentum at the same time. Um, so it's a very useful measurement in particle physics. So don't remember, uh, don't remember, <laughs> what am I thinking? Remember, and don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, go to my website, which is www.quicknuclearscience.com or www.quicknuclearscience.webs.com. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Um, you don't know how much it means to me, considering I get like 20 views on each of these videos. So if you found it helpful, please comment. If you have something that I could do to make it better, or something I got wrong, please don't hesitate. Comment on the video. I really appreciate it. So,